All right, uh, we're gonna do secant to the fifth x dx. If you haven't already seen, I did a secant to the third x, and we need that result uh, for this integral. And so if you haven't seen that video, please check that out because we need the result to get this one. All right, so how am I gonna get secant to the fifth? The first thing to do, just like we did with secant to the third, is I'm gonna break it up. So I'm gonna break it up into two functions and then I can use parts. So I'm gonna do secant to the third x and then secant squared x dx. And why would we do this? Well, if you saw my video with secant to the third, then you know how to solve that one. And if you saw, well, I, we know a lot about secant squared, right? Um, so that's, that's pretty common. This one I just did a video about, so please check that out again if you haven't seen it. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, now we can do parts because we have two different functions. So I'm gonna say u equals something and dv equals something. And here's where I have to make the choice and that choice is gonna make this problem easy or hard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose u to be secant to the third x. Okay, then du equals what? All right, well, if I'm taking the derivative, I have to remember chain rule. So this is secant x to the third. So if I take the derivative of this, the three will come down. And this becomes a two. Then I have to take the derivative of the inside. Well, what is the derivative of secant? Well, that's secant tangent. I gotta be careful, this was a two. So this is secant x tangent x, all right? Well, let's clean that up a little bit. This is secant squared times secant x. So I can write du as three secant cubed x tangent x dx. And I think that's kind of interesting that the derivative of secant cubed has secant cubed in it. It's kind of an interesting function. Now, what about dv? What am I going to pick? Well, I have to pick the other one. So that's secant squared x dx. And then my v, let me close it out. We don't need that anymore. v is going to be, well, this needs to be the derivative of what? Tangent x. That's a normal one that we know. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now, but where are we? Well, now we have u and v. We have uh, v and du, so we can do our by parts. So u, v minus the integral of v, du. We can now build this and make an attempt at solving this, okay? All right, so what are we gonna do? Well, what's our u? Our u in this case is secant cubed x, and what was our v? But tangent x, all right, tangent x, and then du is this nasty thing right here. Three secant cubed x tangent x dx. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite this. This is horrendous, right? So this is secant cubed. Let me pull that up. Secant cubed tangent x minus the integral. I notice I have tangent tangent, so that's tangent squared x, and then I have a three, which I should have just put out here, and then secant squared. That's a squared. Sorry, no, that's a secant cubed. There we go x dx. Okay, now what to do, what to do, what to do. So we have tangent squared times secant cubed x. It just keeps getting worse and worse, right? So we gotta think of something to do. I think one thing we could do is we could rewrite tangent squared. Why would we do that? Well, from trig identities, we know that secant squared x equals 1 plus tangent squared x. And if I do that, then in my integral here, I would only have secants. And at least that's something I can work with. So 
So secant cubed x times tangent x minus 3 times the integral of secant squared x minus 1 times secant cubed x dx. Okay, so if I distribute this, this would become secant to the fifth, and then we'd have a minus secant cubed. So we have secant, hold this up. Let's get rid of that for a moment. Secant cubed x tangent x minus 3. I've got to be careful with my parentheses. Secant to the fifth x minus secant cubed x dx. All right, we're getting closer, believe it or not. One thing I can do is I can break this integral up because this is subtraction, and we know that we can break up integrals because we can break up limits. So we can break up this into two separate integrals. So secant cubed x tangent x minus 3 times the integral of secant to the fifth x dx and then minus minus makes plus the integral of secant cubed x dx. All right, so what did we show? Well, we showed that the integral of secant to the fifth x dx equals this. All right, that means that we have negative three. We had one to the left. This integral is so big, I don't even have <laughs> enough room on my paper. But that means that we have four secant to the fifth x dx equals secant cubed x tangent x plus the integral of secant to the third x dx. All right, and this is the part where I said you have to check out my other video because that's where I evaluated this, and that took me about eight minutes to evaluate that. So in the previous video, we showed this, that secant cubed is one-half secant x tangent, and then natural log of secant x tangent x over 2 plus an integration con constant. So we'll get a different constant this time. So what does that mean? Well, I might need a whole other fresh piece of paper just to write this down. Okay. Fresh as they come with permanent marker, I suppose. Let's see, make sure we can see that. This integral is so nasty, it's hard to even write it down. Okay, so secant to the fifth x dx equals one fourth secant cubed x tangent x, that's over four, plus one fourth, and then we need to multiply that by the result we got last time, which was secant x tangent x over two, plus the natural log of secant x plus tangent x, over two, all right, so drum roll please. The secant to the fifth x dx equals, let's do it this way, secant cubed x tangent x over four, plus that makes that an eight, so secant x tangent x over eight, plus, the natural log of secant x tangent x over 8 plus c. There we go. Wow, that's, that's a heck of an integral, right? So we needed secant cubed just to get this. All right, well, you can imagine the secant to the 7 would be just as exciting. And let me know if you want to see that, okay?